the kinetic molecular theory. The simplest model for the behavior of gases is called the kinetic molecular theory. In this theory, a gas is modeled as a collection of particles in constant motion. So this is how we've been describing a gas all along. This is the same, um, this is the same representation of a gas that we see when we look at this kind of simulation. We can put some gas particles over here in this box. And we see that um, the particles are bouncing around in the box. They're free to go in a straight line. If we follow one particle, it moves in a straight line until it hits another particle. Um, and then it will um, have what we call an elastic collision. And it will bounce off that particle or off of the wall. And it will go on its way in another straight line until it has another collision. So this is the way that gases act. They are a collection of particles where all the particles are in constant motion and they're always traveling in straight lines until they hit each other or hit another gas particle or hit um, the walls of the container or the ceiling or the floor. So uh, we can notice a couple of things about this collection of gas particles, which is that some of them are moving very slowly and some of them are moving very quickly. So this is uh, typical and representative of a real gas too. Sometimes we can see the particles in a gas seem to have stopped and it's as if they're not moving at all. And some particles in the gas are moving very fast. So um, when we look at a collection of gas particles and we think about how fast each particle is moving, this is um, what the this is what we call the temperature of a gas. If we measure the temperature of a gas, what we're measuring really is how quickly the particles in that substance are moving. So if we measure the temperature of something really cold, the particles in that substance are moving very slowly. And if I measure the temperature of something that's very hot, the particles are moving very quickly. So we can see that here. If I decrease the temperature, look what happens to the particles over here. They start moving slow, more slowly. So that's what temperature does is it makes particles move faster. I can heat these gas particles up and they'll start to move more quickly. An elastic collision is one that like between two uh, pool balls on a pool table. When these pool balls hit each other, they uh, cannot deform at all. So that means that the, the force with which they hit each other is redirected and it sends the balls moving this way. Um, they are hard spheres and when they hit each other, there's no chance that that impact is going to cause the other one to deform. So all of the energy from that collision is redirected as um, energy either at the velocity of this ball or uh, the velocities of this ball. They just change angles. In an inelastic collision, the two particles will hit each other and they can deform. So the energy of that collision is absorbed by the particles when they deform. So rather than the energy of that collision causing those particles to deflect and move away from each other at different angles, the energy from that collision is absorbed by the particles and they deform slightly, like two lumps of clay or something. So gas particles are like this. Gas particles are elastic collisions. Because gas particles are surrounded by electrons, and when two particles hit each other, it's electrons that are hitting each other, and electrons repel. So um, we would model gas particles as elastic collisions. They're more like this. So if we think about um, a collection of gas, a gas sample as being lots of little tiny spheres that are in constant motion bouncing around in a box um, like this, like our, um, our simulation over here, then we can see why it is that uh, decreasing the volume would increase the pressure because the pressure is caused by how often these particles hit the 
hit the walls of their container. So if I decrease the temperature, look, they do, they're, the particles don't hit the walls of the container very often anymore because I've decreased the temperature and they're moving more slowly, so they don't hit the walls very often. Also, when they do hit the walls, they're moving very slowly, so they don't impart much force to the walls. So something that has a low temperature has a low pressure. But as I increase the temperature and the particles start moving faster, then they'll hit the walls of the container more often and they'll hit the walls of the container with more force. So they'll, uh, in, they'll impart more force and the pressure in that system will be higher. So if I decrease the volume, then uh, not only am I making the, the um, container smaller, that pushes the particles closer together. And if the particles are closer together, then they're going to hit each other more often, and they're going to hit the walls of the container more often, because they're going to spend less time in open space. Because if I look over at this picture over here, there's a lot of open space, and the particles will kind of fly through space for a minute before they hit, in, before they hit each other. But down here, I've decreased all that open space. There's not as much, and so the particles are going to bump into each other more often, and they're going to bump into the container more often, and so the pressure is going to, going to increase. The, um, when a particle is moving, we call that its kinetic energy. And so we can calculate the average kinetic energy of a sample of gas and it's dependent on how much those particles weigh, the mass, and how fast they're moving. And that's just like we can think about um, the kinetic energy of a car. A car moving 30 miles an hour has less kinetic energy than a semi-truck that's moving 30 miles an hour because although they are going the same velocity, a semi-truck has a lot more mass. So it's the same when we think about gas particles. Um, a small gas particle like hydrogen gas is like a car, and a large gas particle like xenon is like a semi-truck. And so large particles that are moving at the same speed have more energy because they have more mass. So um, when we're thinking about a gas in a container, like this container again, let's look at this one. In this container, if I put a thermometer in here, I'm going to measure 350 Kelvin. That's the temperature of this sample of gas over here. So that's the average kinetic energy of this sample of gas. But kinetic energy, remember, is based on the velocity. And if I look at all of these particles, they don't all have the same velocity. Some of them are moving very slowly, and some of them are moving very quickly. So when I'm taking the temperature of something and I put a thermometer into this sample to take the temperature of this sample of gas, I'm taking the average of the kinetic energy. I can't measure one particle at a time. When the thermometer goes into the sample, all of the particles are hitting it. And so when a really fast particle hits the thermometer, then it imparts its energy to that thermometer. And that means the thermometer, the mercury in the thermometer is going to go up because it's going to uh, have more energy. It's going to um, heat up and it's going to uh, increase volume, like liquids do when they heat up, their volume increases. So um, when I stick a thermometer in here, I'm only getting the average kinetic energy, even though the particles are all, all have different velocities. So that's important to, to remember is that a, a temperature is just the average kinetic energy. It doesn't tell me how fast any particular particle is moving. It's just an average. So since the gases in the same container all have the same temperature, if I have a mixture of gases like air, for example, they all have the same kinetic energy. So um, if I have a sample of air in a container, say 70% um, nitrogen and 20% oxygen, 
So here's my sample of air, pretty representative of air, nitrogen and oxygen. Um, they, well, I've got them at different temperatures here. Let's start them off at the same temperature. So now I've got this, these samples, the sample of air, it's diffusing now. These, these samples of gas are mixing. Both samples are at the same temperature. They're both at 300 Kelvin. So um, that means that the nitrogen weighs more. I can change the mass up here too. Nitrogen weighs 28 and oxygen weighs 32. So um, if all of these particles mix, when they come to equilibrium, and I put a thermometer in this sample, then I'm going to measure one temperature. And I'll measure this temperature, 300 Kelvin, because that's the temperature that both gases were at initially. And when they mix, they'll all be at the same temperature. I kept the temperature constant. So what that means is that the average kinetic energy, the average energy of the oxygen and the average energy of the nitrogen is the same because they're both at 300 Kelvin. Um, and if I look at this equation again, kinetic energy is the same but their masses are different because the mass of nitrogen gas N2 is 28 and the mass of oxygen gas O2 is 32. So if their kinetic energy is the same but their masses are different that means their velocities must be different too. So if we look at the sample again it's kind of hard to tell but the blue ones must be moving faster than the red ones because the blue ones weigh less and so if they have the same energy and they weigh less then they must be going faster. So that's true of all mixtures of gases. When I have a mixture of gases, even if I have three or four or five gases all in the sample, they all have the same temperature which means they all have the same kinetic energy. But if they're all different gases they all have a different masses. So that means that they're all traveling at different velocities. The big ones move slower, like semi-trucks, and the small ones move really quickly, like race cars and motorcycles or something. So um, it's true of gas particles, and it's true of larger objects too. The bigger, heavier ones move slower, and the smaller, lighter ones move faster. So we can see that if we plot the molecular velocity of different gases as um, a function of how many of those particles have that uh, velocity, we can see that um, when, when I look at a sample of H2 that's at one temperature, if all of these gases are at the same temperature, then H2 has a distribution that looks like this, which shows that on average, I have particles in H2 that are moving much faster. I also have particles in H2 that are moving slowly. Um, in all of these gases, there are particles that are moving slowly. But in H2, because H2 has the lowest mass, those particles, that sample has particles that are moving the fastest. And O2, having the highest mass, its particles on average are moving slower. So the peak of each of these uh, curves here shows us the av where the most particles, the speed, um, the speed that most particles in that sample are going at that moment. So in oxygen, the um, speed that most particles have, this is the um, relative number of molecules, this is the highest that that will be, is here at about 400. Nitrogen's a little bit higher. H2O is a little bit higher. Helium has a molecular velocity, an average velocity that's higher, and H2 has a velocity that's higher. So not only do we see that the um, smaller ones are faster on average and the bigger ones with more mass are slower on average, but also that the lighter ones have a much wider distribution. So some particles in H2 are going zero, some particles in H2 are going 500, some are going 1,000, some are going 15, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, 3,500. So in H2, particles have a large distribution of speeds, lots of different speeds available to them. 
But in O2, I have particles going 0 and 500 and 1,000 and a little bit more, and that's it. So there is a smaller range of speeds available to the heavier particles. We can also see that um, the uh, as the temperature increases of any gas, so if I just look at any gas, uh, if I start off with that gas being um, relatively cold, like this is the oxygen curve on the last one, if I heat up that sample of oxygen, then the distribution will start to spread out and it'll look more like one of those smaller gases because the gas particles will go faster as I heat them up. If I heat up the nitrogen even more, then it'll spread out even more and particles will start going faster. If I heat it up even more, it'll spread out more and it'll start going faster. So I can just l take these symbols off, these labels off right here, and say that this is nitrogen at 200, nitrogen at 400, 500, nitrogen at 1,000, nitrogen at 2,000. So any gas, as I heat it up, is going to start to do this. But all these gases are at the same temperature right now. So if a gas gets heated up, then the particles move faster and have a big distribution. Or if the gas is very small and light to begin with, the particles go fast and there's a large distribution of speeds, of velocities. The mean free path is what it's called when a particle can travel and it's the amount of space a particle can travel before it runs into another particle or before it runs into the wall of the container. So let's go back to our simulation here and let's just put 10 particles in here. When I don't have very many particles, the mean free path is very large. Look, each of these particles is free to travel in this big empty box and each particle goes in a straight line for a really long time before it runs into another particle. So um, this, the mean free path in this sample is very large. If I add lots of particles in here, then the, each particle does not travel very far at all before it runs into another particle or before it hits the container, the sides of the, um, of the box. So the mean free path is just the distance a particle can travel before it hits something. When I don't have very many particles, that distance is very large. The particles travel a really far, a really long distance before they run into something. But when I have lots of particles, they can't travel very far at all before they run into something. So the uh, mean free path decreases as the pressure increases. So if I increase the pressure in a sample, either by decreasing the volume, by increasing the temperature, or by um, adding another gas, any of those are going to decrease the mean free path because those particles, they'll either be going faster and hit the walls more often, or if there's another gas in there, they'll hit the other gas more often. So any means of increasing the pressure is going to decrease the mean free path.